Hey guys, today we are going to make some chunky vegetable soup. Um, we're going to start off with some garden variety potatoes, no pun intended, since they're from my garden. And we're going to use two reds and two whites. I mean, this isn't anything set in stone. This vegetable soup has been around for a zillion years. And you can pretty much put anything in it that you really like, as they did back in the day. And I'm talking the 1500s. Um, pretty much everyone could grow a garden back then for the most part. Meat may have been in short supply. But uh, the vegetables were, I don't want to say plentiful, but if you took the effort to grow a garden, they were definitely available. So I'm going to start by cutting up these potatoes. Did I mention they're from my garden? <laughs> and again, it's going to be chunky. And probably three of these are going to be enough. I have four out just in case. So we're going to, yeah, because this is a small pot, the Dutch oven, and I'm going to cook this out on an open fire. So we're going to use those three, technically they're kind of small size potatoes. And then we're going to put about a third of a red onion in it. And we have a lot, a lot of more stuff to go in this. This is actually going to be really, really good. It's the first time I'm making a video with this particular, I don't even know that you want to call it a recipe, but um, meal. So obviously you can put in whatever vegetables you like. If you don't like onions, don't put them in. If you don't like potatoes, don't put those in. But any other vegetable that you like, you can add to this and we're going to put a little bit of celery in it. Celery goes with everything, within reason of course. It does not go with ice cream and pudding like garlic does. And we're going to cook this pretty well over the open fire. Um, and for this recipe, it doesn't really matter which kind of wood you're using because it's going to be in, in my case anyway, in the Dutch oven. So there's not going to be any smoking involved or anything like that. Okay, so now we have the potato, celery, and onion. And this pot's going to get pretty full, I can tell you that. Now, I love corn, so as opposed to buying canned corn to do this, I'm going to use fresh sweet corn. And the silky things I'm not a huge fan of, but it is what it is. So I'll cut this in half, and then I'll use the flat side as my base to trim the kernels off. And this is going to be about as fresh as you can get as far as corn goes. And yeah, it's kind of messy. <clears throat> but the cleanup is so worth it. And then what's left on the cob gets to go to the chickens. So there's some really fresh sweet corn. And I'm really hoping the camera is catching all this because and there was a big pile on the floor. And yeah, I've washed the old mittens so my hands are super clean. OK. 
Okay, so there's that. I'm going to move on to the next item, which is a leak. Again, store bought. This year, the garden has just been unfortunately horrendous. So, a lot of this stuff I have to get at the store. I'd really prefer to do it myself through my garden, that is. Next year is going to be different. So, we'll cut these up into medium sized pieces. And everything actually smells so good. It's actually very fresh. We're lucky enough up here in New York to have a farmer's market not too far away that has an incredible variety of um, vegetables. And they also sell local meats. And now we're going to put in some peppers. These are basically um, bell peppers. And I'm going to cut out the seed husk and we're going to save that. And we're going to try and grow those next year. And I'm going to use a little bit of color. When I was at the um, market today, I thought some red and some green and some orange would be um, nice as opposed to brown and green in the entire recipe. So again, it's chunky soup. I'm not cutting these into little pieces. This one I had to taste as soon as I got home. That's why there's a piece missing out of it. And they're very sweet, very flavorful. And they were kind of low on red peppers or red bells. But that's okay. We have a little bit of red, a little bit of orange, a little bit of green, some yellow, some white. So we'll have some color in here. Not that that affects the taste, of course, but the visuals are just pretty cool. So we'll cut these into some big chunks. We'll put that in there. And this is probably going to be a nightmare to cut, but I need some earthy food or flavor. Obviously, this is an acorn squash. Yeah, and it's like trying to cut through a softball. And I actually have a butternut squash as well, but I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to use that. These seeds also we're going to save for um, next year. These are pretty, boy, everything is just ejecting to the floor. Wife's going to hate me. These are um, actually pretty nice size acorn squash, so the genetics might be just right. And as I said, I want to save these seeds. And um, we'll use these next year in our garden, which, by the way, is going to be a complete makeover for New York. Pennsylvania didn't even try a garden this year. Where I had the garden last year was um, pretty nice looking. The soil was really soft full of uh, worms and so on. Alright, I'm going to tell you what, I'm not going to make you paint through watching me skin this squash. So we'll be back in a second. Okay, so now we have the squash all peeled, sliced up. And it's a lot of work to deal with the squash. So, as I said, I didn't want to paint you through that, so I did it off camera and I only used a half of it by the way not even a half actually maybe a third and again we're going to cut this up into big pieces because this is chunky vegetable soup kind of like that uh, I forget what company it is that makes a chunky soup maybe Campbell's but I bet they don't do it this way Trim these down just a bit. And this is going to be 
really, really good. And if you're not a meat eater, this is a great filling meal without feeling guilty. I, on the other hand, do eat meat, but I'm not putting any in this recipe. There's quite a few vegetables that I am using and some seasonings, which I'll show you here very shortly, and this vegetable broth as well. I'm going to cut the onions in fairly good sized chunks. If I say onions, I meant carrots. If I said carrots, I meant carrots. And I'm pretty sure I already mentioned this is going to be cooking over an open fire. So I'm kind of excited because I think this is really going to be awesome and really, really good for you. Now some fresh green beans, other than that one. And I hate the ends. Green beans are such a nightmare when they're fresh like this because you have to cut off both ends. And if you don't do it squarely, you waste a lot of it. So we're going <laughs> to waste a lot of it. And did I mention about subscribing? YouTube has changed their policy somewhat and they can put commercials, ads, whatever you'd like to call them, on anyone's videos, whether they're monetized or not. So at least if I, I'm just under a thousand subscribers, which is the requirement for monetization, and at least I can control the length of the ads, make them skippable and so on. So if you do watch my videos and you're sick of the ads or not being able to skip them or the length of the ads, please subscribe and I can change that. Okay, so I was going to put some cabbage in here, but we're getting pretty full. So I'm going to skip the cabbage and now we're going to put in the um, vegetable broth. However, before I do that, I'm going to use that as a wash. We're definitely going to use some olive oil. And there's no exact science to this. Whatever you feel is the right amount is going to work for you. A couple of spices that definitely go into this kind of a soup. Um, ground black pepper. Probably a teaspoon. Um, turmeric. I put that in everything, including my Fruit Loops. Probably a teaspoon. Garlic. You guys know me. This goes on everything, including ice cream, and cupcakes. And we're going to do probably a tablespoon of this. Um, paprika. About a teaspoon of that. and just a touch of crushed red pepper, just to give it a little bit of a kick, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon. Okay, so now that all that's in there, we're going to put in, this is 32 ounces of vegetable broth, fat-free, and it's supposed to be vegan-friendly. So we're gonna use this to wash all of the dry seasonings down. that just about it fills the pot to about here and obviously this is going to cook down a little bit and get smaller but I really like the juice of uh, this kind of soup so we're going to top it right off with some spring water and that's going to be it 
Um, this Dutch oven, I think it's a two quart. I just cleaned it and I just kind of quick seasoned it for this, this um, meal. But um, yeah, I wish I had a bigger one because this is going to be, <laughs> I hate to say it, two servings. So I'm going to get this out over the fire pretty shortly and I'll bring you all along for that. Okay, so we just got the fire started and we just put the soup on it and it's going to take a while. But um, we're underway and as I said before, the wood type doesn't matter. It's just for heat. So we'll uh, let this go for a bit and we'll be back. Alright guys, I just put a little more wood on this fire. It's been simmering on a low to medium heat for probably the last hour and a half and I think it's time to mix it up a bit. The uh, turmeric actually adds a nice yellow color to this, to anything you put in it. Put it in. And there's really no set cook time for this because it's all vegetables and the squash is all stringy. Oh no, that's a celery. So yeah, obviously you can eat all of this raw. So when it's consistency is where you like it, consider it done. Okay, I almost forgot to mention that about 30 minutes prior to the end of this cook cycle, I'm going to add about a cup and a half of blueberries. These were picked from the bushes on the property. And if you remember earlier on in the video, when I said I put in the um, uh, the red pepper. This is going to take the edge off. I can't believe I almost forgot to bring this up until it was time to put them in. Then I thought, oh my god, I have to share this. I'm not going to smash them, crush them. I'm putting them in whole. And here and there, you'll get the blueberry flavor. And these were pretty ripe, so they're nice and sweet. And oh man, is this good. Yeah, this is really going to be good. And it is so good for you. Probably the worst thing in here is the olive oil, if you consider that a bad thing. I don't. Very chunky, very aromatic, and it's going to be very tasty. And as I said, it's going to be so good for you that you should eat this three times a day. So maybe another 15 or 20 minutes, and we're going to be good to go. So here it is. It's all finished and ready to munch. I should have mentioned that you put the blueberries in at the very end, the last 15 or 20 minutes, um, so they don't turn into a big pile of goo, mush, so to speak. But... Oh man, I'm telling you, I wish you could smell this. Hot, but cooked perfect. Yeah, I think if you're into vegetables, this is an incredible recipe. And you'll have zero regrets.
the blueberries with the uh, crushed red pepper and the onion just combined to make an incredible flavor overall. So I just wanted to bring you along on this. I haven't made this in a while, um, but I thought it was time. Night times up here in New York is getting a little chilly. By chilly, I mean in the upper 50s, lower 60s. And I thought this would be a great dinner for tonight. Um, Saturday, August 21st, 2021. So guys, enjoy and have a good what's left of your weekend. We'll talk soon. Take care now.